Joining me to start off the show is President Cliff Kling, and we talked a little bit uh, a little while ago, uh, Mr. Kling, and now we get to talk about uh, the GAA way and the mission statement. It came around a little bit ago, and so kind of fill us in on how the process began about trying to find uh, some identity for GAA. Absolutely, Brian. Glad to be here tonight, and uh, glad for, for Jay to be uh, at the Village again tonight. And uh, for anybody who's counting, I did talk to Coach Lee uh, before this, and Coach Lee informed me that he had three tacos uh, already. So. Nice. So uh, anyway, so to a more serious topic, the, the Jay mission uh, and the Jay way, the mission for an independent school is really what we are all about. Uh, everything we do is to try to fulfill that mission. And so every decision we make, every program decision, every dollar we spend, every hire we make, everything is about the mission. And so as I was moving into the role of president, we had a, a mission that had been around for about 20 years and it was very long and it was a mission that was a good mission, but it was not used in everyday uh, discussion. It was not used in everyday uh, decision making. Uh, so part of that was because of how long it was. And so we put together a task force. It was about 20 people on the task force looked at revising the J mission. And one of the things we did is we asked two students to be uh, on that task force. And the two students both said that they didn't realize that Jackson Academy had a mission statement. And that was very indicting to, to us that we needed to use the mission more and that we needed to develop a mission statement that was frankly more memorable. And so we worked on that and the committee worked for over a year. And Jay's mission is within our nurturing and spiritual community. Jackson Academy inspires and equips each student to lead a life of purpose and significance. And that's a mission that one of the things that I think was very uh, pleasing to those on the mission statement task force is when we revealed that mission, people did not feel like that that was a new mission for Jackson Academy. It was a revised statement of an enduring mission that Jackson Academy had been fulfilling for a lot of years. And so that was, that was not our goal, to change the direction of the school, but to perhaps do a little better job of stating that mission. And I think we did that. And, and now we're about two years into the mission. We've used it more in decision making. We've placed it around the campus. And one of the things I really like to do, when I, after carpool, I like to walk the halls. And, uh, and during the morning time, I'll hear many of our, particularly our lower school and our middle school students, actually reciting the mission to start their day. And so those students are learning that mission, and that becomes to some degree a self-fulfilling prophecy. When our students know that we care about them living lives, lives of purpose and significance, uh, that begins to take hold, and they know that that's what we're about as a school. And if you haven't noticed, of course, they're, they're on placards around the campus as well, which is really neat. And then there's also the kind of leads into the JA Way, and uh, kind of identify those four facets about the JA Way. Yeah, Brian, so if, if the mission is the why, the why Jackson Academy exists, the JA Way is more the how. It's how we go about fulfilling that mission. So the four tenets of the JA Way are positive, collaborative, progressive, and student-centered. And those are four anchors that we, that we look to in, again, in decision-making, in uh, making personnel decisions, in, in choosing how we spend our, our, our budget. Uh, and so th those ideas of being positive, of believing in children, that a child's first and most important lesson is you can. Uh, progressive, that you know, if we're not ahead of the curve, then our students are going to be behind. Collaborative, what we can do together is, is better. And then student-centered, that's, that's our very reason for existing as a school. If we're not student-centered as a school, we really don't need to exist. And so every decision we make is centered first and foremost around our students and serving them. One other thing that uh, folks are going to get to get a, a glimpse at very soon, I know we talked about this in our very first conversation, and I kind of snuck up there this morning, actually, and it's close uh, as far as the new learning comments, and it looks amazing. Well, thank you, Brian. Uh, in fact, today we had, uh, a, as our students well know, they were not in school today, we had staff professional development, and Pat Bassett, who is the former president of the National Association of Independent Schools, was on campus, and without knowing we had done this learning commons renovation, he talked about uh, learning spaces and he even mentioned having a, a coffee shop and so I was able to tell him at the break I said Pat we, we have all those, all those things already so I showed him the space and yes it's very close very excited about it and, and, and this is a guy who has been to, to schools in 40 states and 40 countries literally thousands of schools and he remarked that it was a it was a, an incredible space and he was very impressed and I, I know our students are going to be I think some of them have already snuck a peek uh, and looked but uh, it's going to be very exciting and we're hoping uh, I think Thursday or Friday of this week uh, to be able to open it up and, and allow our students to begin using it. And that was the thing, in fact, when I was touring Pat today, is that it, it, as impressive as, as the space is, it's going to be even more impressive when we see our students using the space, see their learning becoming visible, all the, 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 
walls in, in the individual breakout conference rooms are, are, are really team rooms. They're not conference rooms. All of those walls are ideal walls. They're, they're full-on uh, paint that's whiteboard uh, or, or whiteboard type paint. So all the, the ideas can be up on the walls. We have, we have technology tables where you can plug in laptops. So making learning visible, creating spaces for students to be able to collaborate and to, and to work in teams, work collaboratively, again, supporting the J way of being collaborative. Real quick, a question I didn't prepare you for, but I know you're obviously a professional, you can handle it. But how important are these professional development days for your staff? Well, you know, schools are institutions of teaching and learning, uh, and that learning really begins with the faculty and the staff. And so we are, we are the lead learners of the school. I mean, more, more so than even teachers, we should be the lead learners. And so taking time to, to uh, better our craft and better what we do, and particularly in today's times, when education is changing at such a rapid rate and uh, schools of the future, we talk today about the big shifts in education. And so it's very important that we commit that faculty time of professional development to, to getting better at what we do so that we can serve students better. That's President Cliff Kling. And of course, you can find out more about Jackson Academy online at jacksonacademy.org. We encourage you to come out and check out the new Learning Commons the next week or so when it opens up for all.